Welcome back to Hackwood. In this video, we are diving into the popular tree manipulation problem, Invert Binary Tree. This problem is essential for understanding binary trees properties and recursion in depth. By the end of this session, you will understand how to invert any binary tree using the simple and efficient recursion method. So here given question is, given the root of a binary tree, invert the tree and return its root. So the task is to invert a binary tree where each node's left and right children are swapped at every node. This seemingly simple operation is a great exercise for grasping the recursive tree uh, traversal techniques. So let's look at the examples here. I've seen example one, uh, here that this is the given tree and this is the tree which is inverted. Uh, so here for a given root node, we inverted the, uh, both shells, right? We had uh, two as a left shell back then, then it became a right shell now. Similarly, seven. So this, this is recursively applied at each level, right? So here also we can see that for seven, that uh, nodes were inverted, similarly for two. So same for example two, we see that this tree is inverted as this one. So we see that the for two, uh, the right shell was three and now it is a left shell. So uh, the example three is when the the root is null or like empty list, we just need to return the empty way. This is a base case. So the constraints are the number of roots in the trees is in the range of zero to 100 uh, and then node values is the increase the range of minus 100 to 100. So let's look into the approach. So we're gonna use a recursion. So the algorithm shows like this. The first is the base case. So if the node is null, written null immediately. This case handles the leaf node's children. Next is recursive inversion. So swap the left and the right children of the current node. This requires a recursive call to invert the right subtree and another call to invert the left subtree. So next is to return the node. So after the children are swapped, return the current node, which is now represents the root of the inverted subtree. Let's look at the flowchart here. As we see here, we start at the root and then we check if it is a node is null. If yes, we return null. If no, we just invert the right subtree and the left subtree and we swap the left and right children and then return the current node. So let's look at the parent here. So we take uh, this tree as an example. So we'll walk through the function call each step by step to see how each node is processed and how the tree structure changes with the recursive call. So the first step uh, is like we start at the root that is node one. Uh, so here, if you take that node one, then the current node is a node one. Since node one is not null, we proceed to invert its children. So, and then we call the invert tree on the node one's right children three. And then next is inverting the node three. Just a recursive call, right? So it went to the node three now. So here the current node is node three. Uh, and then the node three has no children. So the recursive call for its children written null. So swap the null values and no change occurs here. And then we return the node three to its caller, that is node one. So now uh, the recursive call goes to node two, right? So we need to invert node two. After completing the right subtree of the node one, we move to the left subtree. So the current node is two. Uh, we call invert three on the node two's right shell, that is five. This is five only, right? Right shell is so. And then uh, we see here, see uh, the original tree is this one. So after performing the two and three, the structure remains same, right? Because we uh, we don't see any point of inversion at this point. So let's let's look into the uh, remaining steps, four to seven, inverting node five. So uh, we have the current node is five and the node five has no children. So the recursive call return null. So swap null values, no change occurs here also. And then uh, we return the node five to its caller, that is node two. And the next step is inverting the node four. So in this node four, uh, we call invert three and the node two's left children, that is node four here, the current node is node four. Uh, so node 4 has no children, so the recursive call returns the null. And then we swap the null values, no change occurs here also. And then node 4 returns to its caller, that is node 2. Now we are back to node 2, right? So the node 5 and node 4 are inverted and returned. So we swap node 2's children, and then node 2 now points to the node 4 as a right children. And the node 5 as a left children. So return the modified node 2 to its caller, that is node 1. Node 1 is the root now, right? So we now back to the node 1 with node three and node two are inverted and returned. So we swap the node one's children and then node one now points to the node two as a right child and node three as a left child. So return the modified node one as a new root of the inverted tree. So the resulting tree is this one, one, three, two, five, four. We see that tree is inverted. So uh, the steps from the four to seven result in this tree. The step-by-step dry run demonstrates the recursive nature of the tree inversion with each node's uh, children being swapped from the bottom of the tree upwards. Let's look at the code explanation. Uh, 
Uh, this recursive function works by first reaching the leaf nodes and then start inversion from the bottom of the tree upwards, ensuring that every node still does not swap. So the first is the base case where we return none if the current node is none, right? So we just check if the not root and then we return. The next is recursive call to invert the right subtree and the left subtree and then we swap it, right? Here we just uh, doing the recursive call to the right subtree and the left subtree and then uh, we just swapping it the right away, this tuple unpacking swapping method. So here and then uh, we return the current node after its children are having swapped. So here we return the root. So let's look into the complexity analysis. The time complexity is O of n, where n is the number of nodes in the tree. So each node is uh, visited exactly once. The space complexity is O of h, where h is the height of the tree. That This is the space used by the regression struct. So in the worst case, the tree is completely unbalanced. The h can be the number of nodes. And in the best case, the tree can be completely balanced and h is log n. So let's look into the demo. So I got the code ready here. Let's try summoning this. So yeah, it's accepted solution and it's better than, so it beats the 73.2% of the users pattern, to almost the better solution. Conclusion, inverting a binary tree is an excellent example of how regression is can be applied to modify the tree structures effectively. Understanding this pattern will not only help in solving the similar uh, tree related problems, but also helps in the grasping the deeper concepts of recursive programming and tree manipulations. Thank you. Thank you for tuning to the episode of Hack Code. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more important tutorials and follow some tips. If you have any questions or search for specific topics, please put them in the comments below. Until next time, have a good day.